word of God, Psalm 23. Psalm 23, if you'd like to turn with me, please. And I want to speak tonight about the great shepherd, the Lord Jesus, the great shepherd. This is a very, uh, this is the personal psalm. This is the psalm for the individual. This is your psalm tonight, dear child of God. This is my psalm. This is the personal psalm. And isn't it wonderful we, when we can echo the words and we can say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. And we know uh, God will bless to us the reading of his precious word. There's probably no greater scripture that's more famous than Psalm 23. It reminds me of the story on one occasion where uh, there was a, a, a concert and a performance and uh, this man, he got up and he read Psalm 23 and uh, the people clapped and applauded at such eloquence, such wonderful utterance that he was able to speak you know those that have the radio voice and they just, just have that edge. And then the, this other man got up and he read Psalm 23 and the people wept. And there was such bewilderment they couldn't understand it. And one inquired, what, what made the difference? And he says, that man knows the psalm. He said, I know the shepherd. And that's what makes the difference. We know the shepherd of the psalm. The Lord is, he's my shepherd. And I want to look at this little psalm tonight, sort of in three aspects in Psalm 23. Number one, who is this shepherd? Who is he? Well, of course, John's gospel in chapter 10 is the Psalm 23 of the New Testament for the Lord Jesus says in John 10 and 11, I am the good shepherd and the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. So David the psalmist here, the sweet psalmist of Israel is writing a prophetic psalm in relation to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It says of him uh, in the glorious book of, of Hebrews chapter 13 that he's the great shepherd. Now the great shepherd of the sheep, the Lord Jesus. And Peter reminds us that he's the chief shepherd. And one day the chief shepherd shall appear. And in Psalm 80 and verse 1, O Israel, thou that leadest Jacob like a flock, O shepherd of Israel. And we see here that the Lord Jesus is, of course, the great shepherd. That's who he is. He's God Almighty. And what, what he has in this psalm, well, he is all sufficiency. He is all the sufficiency that we need for the journey that we're on. And uh, I want to also look at tonight at what he does and how he protects, and how he provides, and how he looks after his sheep. 
And that's sort of the three aspects that I want to look at as we look at this psalm. Sure, you could preach for a year in Psalm 23. You could pull out so much from it. It's been uh, declared as the, the pearl of the psalms. And uh, tonight we have to look at it. You see, in, in our uh, Western society, we're not familiar with shepherding. It's a strange profession to us. We know nothing about shepherding, and I don't know very much about it either. But I have a little interest in farming, for I worked on a farm uh, in my youth. But we have to see this through the, the Eastern shepherd uh, of Bible times, for this was when it written, was written, and David, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, is the author. And David, of course, is the shepherd boy that the Lord had his hand on. This should encourage you tonight. There he was away in the, in the wilderness, the Judean hills, those inhospitable places at times. And that's where he encountered God. That's where he met the great shepherd. That's when the Lord revealed his power and his presence to the sweet psalmist of Israel. So you've got to put your your Israeli glasses on tonight, your Jewish glasses on, and look at it through the eyes of the Eastern Shepherd. So we know that the Shepherd is, of course, the Lord Jesus. And I want you to try and place yourself, as it were, in David's sandals tonight and imagine that you're going back 4,000 odd years or maybe, maybe more. And David... If you were to see this young boy equipped and look upon him, he's just like a little, a little lad of maybe 17, 18 years of age looking after his father, Jesse's sheep. He's the youngest of the family and they've given him this role of the shepherd boy and there he is looking after the sheep. Do you remember when Samuel the prophet came to Jesse's house looking to anoint the king that was in Jesse's line? And they all stood before Samuel, all these wonderful men of stature and significance. And Samuel looked upon each one of them and the Spirit of God said to Samuel, no, it's not him. And he went right down the line and came to the last one and the Lord said, Samuel, it's not him. And Samuel, I'm sure, was bewildered. He said, Lord, they're all here and you've sent me to anoint one of Jesse's sons to be king over Israel. Have I heard wrong? <laughs> and then he said to Jesse, have you any more? And he says, there's one more, but he's only a strip of a lad. He's ruddy. <laughs> he's not really much to look at. And he's out with them old sheep. Samuel says, call for him and bring him here. <laughs> God will find you in the wilderness. And he brought him. And God says, anoint him. For he's the one. A little insignificant boy was God's anointed. And this is the one that God anointed that wrote this psalm. The little shepherd, the little boy, the sweet psalmist of Israel. And so from a shepherd's perspective, he's writing. And the, the eastern people can identify with shepherding. They know all about it because lambs were needed for the sacrifices in Israel for the temple. It was actually a very important job to be looking after sheep and bringing forth lambs. But the shepherd, of, we looked at the shepherd, now we're going to look at uh, his equipment, his tools, if you like. Because this, this eastern shepherd, it says here in, in verses, um, verse 4, Thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. 
thy rod and thy staff there. There are two individual pieces of the shepherd's equipment. First of all, the rod. The rod is, is like a, a, a 30-inch club, something that you, with, a, with a big end at one end, with a handle and a cord through, that he could tie on to his belt. And this was a, a club. And that club would have, may even have pieces of flint in it, perhaps even pieces of metal, nails. And, and that rod was for the sole purpose of protecting the sheep. That rod was not used for correcting the sheep. That rod, that club was for the protection of the sheep. And no doubt David used that to defeat a lion and to defeat a bear. And in fact, they were so skilled in using it, they could have thrown it at animals and smote them with it and knocked them out and then run over and clubbed them and killed them. Shepherds were skillful people in weaponry. So you can imagine if you see the, the David fella with his eastern garb and his flowing coat and the little belt around him and we'll come to his outer garment later. And so he has this little belt and here's the, the, this rod, this club. So you can see the analogy immediately, thy rod. And then he says, thy staff, they comfort me. The staff, of course, is uh, the shepherd's crook that's used to uh, bring assistance to the sheep. It's also used to assist the shepherd walking up the mountainous regions that he can lean upon. And so it has benefits for the shepherd, but primarily for the sheep because it's got the crook head on it. And we know what that's for. If a little lamb falls into a deep ravine in the Judean wilderness, I don't know if you've ever been to Israel and seen the landscape, you get a, a better understanding. And so these sheep <coughs> would at times our little lambs wander off and fall over a precipice and down into a crevice where the shepherd couldn't reach. He couldn't get in or get out, but he could put down his crook and he could place it in under the little lamb or the sheep by the neck or by the hip or whatever and pull it out to safety. And so here's this shepherd's crook and uh, it's there to bring comfort to the individual little lambs. And you know, when we get a picture of that, his rod and his staff, they comfort me. The comfort of his protection and the comfort of the shepherd's provision. So he has the staff, he has the rod, and of course he has the shepherd's belt for to hang the club upon. And then he'll have a bag around him we would call it, I suppose, a, a satchel, it's called in the scriptures, a script. You know, like when you went to school and you had the leather bag over you and it was quite a large bag. And this is what, where he carried um, certain parts of his equipment. And in that leather bag, there were a number of things. First of all, there was a slingshot, a slingshot. And uh, you don't see it uh, so much used here now. I remember trying to sling years ago. We were more better with a catapult, but those shepherds, they used a slingshot. And in the bag, there would have been the sling and there would have been the stones. Do you remember when David went to face Goliath? What had he over his shoulder? <laughs> the shepherd's bag the slingshot and the five smooth stones from the brook. And he could have put those stones into the little diamond-shaped piece of leather with the two pieces connecting to it for the sling. And he could have swung that round and let loose. And they say that it could have, he could have hit within a hair's breadth. Let me just read you a wee scripture here about how skillful they were in Judges chapter 20, 
and verse 16. It says, Among all this people, there were 700 chosen men left handed. That'll encourage you, Mandy. Left handed. Everyone could sling stones at an herb's breadth and not miss. You know, that there were, there were tremendous marksmen. David could use that slingshot as well as a man could use his gun. They were so skilled. And they also in his bag, excuse me, there would have been as well the anointing oil for the sheep. And the anointing oil was used for a number of reasons. In the Judean hills, uh, whenever the dew fell, remember it's a place very barren of rain. But when the dew came, and the dew is so important in Israel because it lays so heavy on the ground in the early morning, and the uh, there would have been little, little tufts of grass would have grown in and around the edges of the stones. You remember those like big pebbles you would see there on Port Rush? Big, big, reasonably sized stones. And the grass would, would grow in and around the edges of that where it would get a little protection and a little cover from the sun. The dew would, would help that to grow. And so for the sheep then to get at that grass, it would, no, it would nose and push the stone over, you see, and then it would get at the grass and it could eat the grass and it could feed on this pasture. But as a result of all this foraging for this grass, the little noses became grazed, you know, like a little blister. I remember on one occasion we had a little dog and uh, the top of his nose was burned. It had a burn mark on it. I wonder what had happened to our dog. Couldn't understand it. Until this day I've seen it. And I had given it its food, and it had had enough of food, and it was burying the food then with the nose. But of course, it had no straw or no grass or no soil to bury its nose, and it was rubbing its nose on the tidy floor, <laughs> and as a result, it burned its nose. And the eastern shepherd, the little sheep, their noses are burned, they're sore. And the shepherd doesn't pass them by, he anoints them. Because oil has healing properties and it alleviates pain as well. This is the olive oil that the shepherd would be carrying in his little bag. And then also in the summertime when the flies and the gnats would be really disturbing the sheep, uh, the sheep would run about nearly mad to, to run away from them and to get away from them and what the shepherd would do as well is he would apply this oil to the top of their head and that would repel the flies and repel the gnats and give the little sheep and lambs peace and rest. And this wasn't a one-off anointing. This was a daily anointing. As long as the flies and the gnats were there, the shepherd was taking care of his individual sheep. And uh, here, here's a picture in this psalm of, of what David's carrying around with him day by day as he's shepherding this little flock. And here's the spiritual analogy. There's sheep are mentioned over 500 times in the word of God. The Lord Jesus is the good shepherd. We are his sheep of his pasture and he ministers to us and feeds us and blesses us. So we know who he is. He's the good shepherd and we're seeing here what he does and the equipment that he has. And so he has his little bag and uh, in his bag also is food for himself. He has food for himself. He would have dried fruit, probably dates and olives and raisins and whatever he could carry with him and bread and baked bread, barley bread and so forth to sustain him and keep him and he would have lived whatever he could forage as well around. He was very sufficient, self-sufficient and very, very astute and he knew how to live off the land. You know, the Lord Jesus, isn't he the great provider? 
And uh, David also, not only was he a shepherd to his sheep, but in the little bag as well, he would have carried his reed or his pipe, his, his reed, his flute, and he would have brought that with him. And he's known as the sweet psalmist of Israel. And he would have played whenever the sheep, he would have took them. And uh, they would have been resting in the afternoon time. He would have played uh, till himself. Then, of course, he would have sang. You ever sing at your work? Of course. Sing when you're doing housework. Well, you used to. <laughs> and you know what? These sheep would have recognized the shepherd's voice when he would have been singing and what he'd been playing. There, there was an intimacy with the shepherd and the sheep. And the amazing thing about the eastern shepherd is he didn't drive the sheep. He led his sheep. He led them out. And uh, here in the Western society, they're sheep dogs that drive the sheep. They're called drovers and they drive them. But the eastern shepherd, he went before them. He led them out and he actually mingled through them. He walked amongst them and he knew each and every one of them by name. He gave them names. He, he was so intimate with his sheep. So we see then that he brought his instruments and he would have been singing and he would have been talking to them. But he was also as well, as I mentioned, he was a physician to his sheep. He was a physician because he treated them and he ministered to their needs, but he was also a surgeon and a midwife for whenever the sheep would have needed attention at lambing time and any farmer would know that a sheep, it's a very busy, busy time, a very active time, on a time when you'd need to be wide awake both morning and night. And of course, the shepherd was there for them in time of need. Isn't that just tremendous? He's there for us in our time of need. And we read as well, the shepherd of, uh, would have also had what's called the shepherd's cloak. And we have a picture of this in Isaiah, chapter 40. And I'll read the scripture to you. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 11. And it speaks about the, the shepherd's cloak. Now, let me explain a little what it is. The shepherd's cloak was his outer garment. And it was woven of wool. It was very heavy. It kept him warm in the winter time. It kept him warm at night. Uh, if it had been a wet and windy day, there was a hood on it that he would have pulled up over his head. And uh, it was a, a wide cloak that he could wrap around himself. And that's a picture here and of Isaiah 40 and 11 where the Lord says, he shall feed his flock like a herd shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young. And when some of these little lambs, and you see that uh, when some of the lambs are unwell, they put them under the heat lamp uh, to give them a little start to help them on because they're weak and they're feeble and they need that. Perhaps uh, the mother has struggled in labor to bring it forth. And the shepherd at times would, would take that little lamb and he would place it on his bosom and he would wrap his coat or his mantle around it and he would warm it with his own body and he would nurture that little one. And that's a picture of the love of God, his warm caress, his warm embrace, his tender love for Israel, his tender love for the child of God. We're close to the heart of God. And this is a picture here of, of God's love, of God's tenderness, of God's compassion that the great shepherd has for his little lambs. That's for you and for me. 
And uh, it would all, it also, and here's an interesting truth as well in relation to this outer garment, this cloak. In Exodus 20, chapter 22, In Exodus chapter 22 and verse 26 to 27 says this. If thou at all take thy neighbor's remnant, that's his cloak, to pledge, thou shalt deliver it unto him by that the sun goeth down. For that is his covering only. It is his remnant for his skin wherein shall he sleep, and it shall come to pass when he crieth unto me that I will hear, for I am gracious. Not only was it his cloak, it was his blanket. And he used that to wrap himself in at night to protect him from the cold. And so important was that to him. Do you remember the Lord Jesus in the New Testament says, if you've got two, to give one away. And what he was saying, you know, share, share your wealth uh, with those who don't have anything. Don't hoard it all for yourself. And that's a tremendous picture here of uh, the shepherd's cloak and how the little lambs were embraced close to the Savior's breast. And when we think about his tools and his equipment in relation to uh, what the shepherd has when he's walking amongst his sheep, it gives us a little bit of an insight into Eastern shepherding and what the shepherd now pens when he says this. So in light now of having that little bit of information, let's look then at the psalm. And this is what he says. The Lord is my shepherd. This is the same David that has the bag, the script, the cloak, the club, the staff, the oil. This is the same David that has the shepherd's equipment that is the shepherd of his little flock that has encountered the shepherd of Israel that knows him as his Savior and Lord, the sweet psalmist of Israel that is singing praises in the wilderness hills in Judea, is writing this wonderful psalm under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that has been the, the means of blessing the masses and the multitudes of Christians down through the ages. Isn't it tremendous? And David, the shepherd king, the shepherd boy says, the Lord. Jehovah, God Almighty, he's my shepherd. He has all I need. He's all I need. He, Jehovah, Yahweh, Almighty God, the one who created all things, and David was a man of the field, and he knew and he appreciated everything he had, and he knew that God had blessed him. And he was able to say, the Lord, he's my shepherd. You see, David had the shepherd's heart. David was compassionate. David was wholesome and winsome and lovely. David, David cared for his sheep. He loved his sheep. He tended his sheep. He watched over his sheep. And he, of course, had a heart for his sheep. And he knew that the Lord Jesus God Almighty was his shepherd. And on that basis, he's able to say, I shall not want. Did David's sheep lack anything? If there was anything they needed that was possible within his means, he would provide. He would provide for his sheep. And on that basis, David knew that God, his God, would provide for him. And he knew, I, I shall not want. If I have such an interest in my sheep, how much more shall your heavenly Father 
feed and provide for your needs. For he, of course, the Lord Jesus, is the great shepherd of the sheep. And David can say with assurance, I shall not want. And he goes on to say, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. If you can imagine you're an eastern shepherd and to lead your sheep into green pastures is into the place of blessing. David's sheep were blessed sheep. They dwelt on the very best of the land. He fed them in pastures green, in lush places. When the rains came and the grass grew uh, and there was abundance of food for them, he led them into green pastures, places of abundance, places of sufficiency, places where these sheep could, could fatten, places where these sheep would be satisfied. And oh, friends, he says, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. They're a place of rest, a place of rest for God's sheep. You know, this in the word of God says there is a rest for the people of God. And that rest is in the promises of God and the word of God and the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures and then he says, he leadeth me beside the still waters. That's very important. Sheep would drink any sort of water. They would drink stagnant water. They would even go into water up to their, their belly and be stuck and drowned. And sheep can only drink from shallow water really because of the shape of their mouth. If they take it in through their nose, they'll choke and die. And David, he knew the blessing and benefit of these still, rich, glorious waters. He leadeth me beside the still waters. And we know, of course, that waters speak in the scriptures of the Holy Spirit. The waters of the Holy Ghost be still and know that I am God. The water of the word, the water of blessing, the river of life. And then he says, he restoreth my soul. He restoreth my soul. And really what that means, if we were to go up into, which we'll have in time to do in Psalm 42, uh, it talks about, why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, trust thou in God, for thou shalt yet praise him. And, and this word here, restoreth my soul, is in relation to the cast down sheep. And uh, that was so wonderfully brought out here at the ladies' meeting uh, the other Thursday evening when our dear sister shared about the upside down sheep. And that's what it means to be cast. The, the um, agricultural term, the farmers would tell you that if a sheep is cast, it's lying on its back. And that can happen when they've access wool on them before they're sheared. It can mean even they could fall into a little ravine and turn upside down. And what happens with the sheep is they have four stomachs. And the gas is if they're laying upside down for a long period, they'll flail their legs. They can't push themselves over. They're struggling. They get so anxious and, 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 and in such a, a state that they're laying there flailing their legs. They can't, they can't go either way. And these gases then uh, liquefy and become solid in their stomachs and it'll kill them. They'll die within a matter of hours unless they're placed on their feet again. And really what David is saying here, he restoreth my soul, he rideth me up. And the eastern shepherd will come along to the little sheep and uh, he'll, throw his, he'll straddle his leg over it and he'll flip it over and he'll, he'll hold it with his legs and he'll massage its neck and its head and he'll massage its legs uh, because the thing will be dizzy, the gas is in it, it's dizzy, and he'll settle it down and he'll rub it and he'll, he'll give it comfort and he'll strengthen it. 
And then he let it go. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Trust thou in God, for we shall yet praise him. He restoreth my soul. At times he puts me the right side up. When I fall, when I can't help myself, when I can't rise, like the word of God in Micah 7, when I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. I shall arise. He shall, he shall lift me up. Isn't there times he has lifted us up? When we were cast down in spirit, cast down in heart, discouraged, afflicted, wounded, helpless, hopeless, when we needed the master to come alongside, but he didn't throw his legs over us. He threw his arms around us and he comforted us and he restored our soul. He restored our hope. He restored our joy. He restored our self-esteem. He, he restoreth us. And this is what David said, he restored my soul. That, that deep part of you, that internal peace of your wonderful makeup that God has created that he's reserved for himself, the real you, the part that hurts. We can cope with a broken arm. We can cope with a wounded leg, but oh, the spirit that's brushed and cruised, that's crushed, brushed, crushed and hurt and bruised. We need that soul restored. And that's the word of God and the good shepherd. He restoreth my soul. He's done that for me. Many times he has, he has helped me. He has restored me when things look so black, when we're so low, when we're so deep down. But he has come alongside. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. That's paths that are right. You can imagine David here leading these little sheep. And he's not going to take them near the ravine's edge. He's going to lead his sheep in the safest path, path as possible. He's going to keep them as far away from danger as he possibly can because he's the good shepherd. And this, dear friends, is what the word of God is to us. It's safety. We are reading the Proverbs on a Sunday morning. Oh, if Solomon would have just obeyed what he wrote, he would have been a wise man. The word of God is for our protection. The word of God is for our safety. The word of God is for our guidance. The word of God is for his glory and for our good. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I seen that out uh, one time when we were in Israel, this big, big valley of death. And uh, it's so deep down and the sides of the valley are so high and yet the shepherd takes his sheep through this valley. And in that valley can be filled with predators, bears and lions and hyenas, all sorts of predators that are just waiting to attack the sheep, waiting to pounce on it, to bring it into death, to destroy it, to end its life. David goes before these sheep. And when they're in the ravine, they're gathered in behind them. And he's going before them. Oh, how our Lord Jesus has went before us. He has tasted death for every man. He went down into the depths of death for us and he rose triumphant from the grave. And tonight he's alive and lives in the power of an endless life. And his sheep hear his voice and they know him and they follow him and he giveth unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them from their hands. And when these animals would come, 
the shepherds there with the club. Friends, we have a sword as well, the word of God. When the enemy would come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. And as these sheep are walking through this valley, making their journey, because every valley has two hills and the valleys have an outlet, and as they're walking through the valley, they have nothing to fear. You know, when it comes our time to go into the valley, we have nothing to fear. We'll close our eyes in death and we'll open them in his presence with nothing to fear. Whenever my mother was dying, I said to her, Mother, you're going through the valley now. Just keep trusting the Lord Jesus and he'll take you into the light. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil because Jesus is with me. He says, I'll never leave thee and I'll, I'll never forsake thee. I'll be with thee. Thou prepare, preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. This table, of course, the shepherd's speaking about the table land through the valley the green loose places, the table land. Can you imagine the joy when the sheep come out and they see all this green grass? They've forgot about the past. Children, brothers and sisters tonight, he's prepared a table for us. And it's in heaven. And it's called the marriage supper of the Lamb. And you and I will dine there. We're invited guests and we'll sit at the master's table. We'll eat the manna of the heavenly land and we'll enjoy sweet fellowship with the Lord Jesus forevermore. Because he says, I go to prepare a place for you for you and if I go and prepare I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there you shall be also thou preparest a table speaking of fellowship there's nothing like the fellowship of God's people and there's nothing like the fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ a table of fellowship prepared of God. And then he says, it's in the presence of mine enemies, thou anointest my head with oil. He pours upon us, doesn't he? His blessed Holy Spirit. That oil to soothe the wounds, that oil to alleviate the pain, you remember in times of trial and trouble when the Spirit of God has brought that word to your heart, reminding you, fear not, my child, I am with thee. Fear not, my child, be still. Be still and know that, that I am God. Fear not, my child, my times. I look after you. That wonderful word of God, that oil of the joy of the Lord, the Holy Spirit himself anointing us. It's the picture of the anointing. Do you remember the high priest? They brought him in and they anointed him with the anointing oil and David himself was anointed. This is the picture. When Samuel came and anointed him with oil and said, you're God's anointed. You're the Lord's chosen. Dear Christian tonight, you're the Lord's chosen. You're God's anointed. He has separated you for, for himself. He has anointed you. 
and he's blessed you. And as a result, David says, and my cup runneth over. You see, in that little bag, David would have had a little cup. And he used that cup to go into the brook and he would have picked up water for himself, refreshed himself. And he knew the value of water. It's very precious in a land parched with sun. And he was able to say when he was parched with thirst, leading his sheep weary and tired with dusty feet, and he was able to come with his little cup and put it into the little brook along with the sheep and have a full cup. A full cup. In fact, it was so full that it was running over. (laughs) What a picture of the abundance of this glorious Christian life. What a picture of the abundance of the supply of our heavenly shepherd. What a picture of the abundance of God's goodness and mercy. For he says, that's what shall follow us all the days of my... You know, you older saints, you can look back tonight and you can say, the Lord has been good to me and the Lord has been merciful to me all of my life. And he has. And it has followed you. It has been with you. It has blessed you. He has kept you. He has provided for you. There's not a need he hasn't met. And then to summarize it all, he says, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. How long is that? <laughs> Can you tell me the end of that? There's no end. Because there's no end of God. And you know, dear brothers and sisters, I know at times the journey's, the journey's hard. The journey's tough. There's trials, there's tears, there's difficulties, there's challenges. It's not easy living for Christ in our day and generation. It never was easy for any generation. If you want to do business with God, it's not easy. But it'll be worth it when we get to the other side. Because as we spoke the other night, there'll be no more tears, no more sorrow, no more sadness, no more pain, no more pilgrimage. We will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I'm glad I'm saved tonight. I'm glad I have the promises of God. I'm glad the Lord Jesus is my shepherd. I'm glad I'm the sheep of his fold. And you know what? Yes, there's times the wee sheep, sometimes they even butt their head fighting one another. And David had to oil them both. Sometimes we can butt one another and knock one another. Push one out of the way for we want the sweetest of the grass. But you know, there's enough for us all. For he's the good shepherd. And the good shepherd hath given his life for the sheep. It's lovely to be able to say tonight in closing, the Lord Jesus is my shepherd. Can I ask you tonight, is he yours? Is he your shepherd? Amen.